Welcome back to Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Welcoming back. He was just here last month promoting Plus Fest, and now he's got another event that he has going on. He's teamed up with the uh, Houston Ballet for a production called Play. It's an evening of celebrating Houston's resilience after Hurricane Harvey. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Outspoken Bean. Welcome back. You're like a regular on this show now. I'm trying to be, man. What's up, man? How are you? How I'm are you? pretty good. Yeah, um, it's good to see you again, man. You too, bro. I had got a call from um, the Houston Ballet. They were looking to uh, come on the program, and they were explaining um, Play, yeah. which is uh, the name of the uh, performance piece. And um, when she mentioned that, you know, <laughs> you were involved, you, you're, you're the main man. I'm like, oh, man. wow. Yeah, Outspoken yeah. Bean is everywhere. So um, first. Yes, sir. Tell us how you teamed up with the Houston Ballet uh, for this Yeah, so it's been kind of, I guess, something in the making for a few years now oh, wow. that, okay. um, that I didn't know was being made, right? So um, Jen Summers, who works in education at the Houston Ballet, her and I did a project where, we, where she brought me in to work with, to work with other teachers other uh, educational professionals, actually, um, and how to blend dance with writing and to teach that, right? Mm. And so that was like like probably about five years ago when we did that together. Wow, and that was then when we, I first got to Houston. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was like five years, man. And so then we kept working together, and we would do simple, uh, small things and uh, here and there. And then this came up. And my friend, my good friend, uh, Deborah Deep Mouton, who is the Houston Poet Laureate, mm-hmm. they had booked her to be a, to write a poem for for a play, and and Jen hit me up, got whiff of that, hit me up, and asked me, you know, would I be interested in doing this? And the answer was an emphatic yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, man, it's just really building relationships. And I, so I met. I met uh, Stanton and came through the got a tour again of the facility and they they told me what the idea of what they wanted and and here I am man that's like yeah yeah so that's how that's how it happened so Jen Summers really brought me in um into this part into this project it's going to be um, incredible you're listening yes, to Access sir. Houston we're talking to outspoken Bean who is a part of the Houston Ballets. Uh, what are we calling this? Is is it it's a like a pro- repertory? Uh, okay, a repertory. A repertory new work. All right. Of um, uh, and my portion is uh, I wrote an original poem. Uh, I wrote an original poem, and they're going to be performing, performing to, to it. The poem. Yeah, yeah, and it's called play. Yes, sir. Um, n- help me. Um, Put it all together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's put it together together. Let's unpack yes. this. Let's, <laughs> let's unpack this. Yeah, yeah. So there's, so repertory means like multiple things happening, right? Mm-hmm. So when people come to play, right, make sure you make sure you go to uh, HoustonBallet.org, right? Uh, but when people come to play, it's going to be a three-sided, uh, 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 what we call in theater, thrust. Um, the the stage is kind of in the center, and mm-hmm. the audience is on, on the, the left, side. front, and right side. Got it. Right, and and there's multiple there's multiple uh, performances going on the same night, but they're all kind of their own. They're all the kind of their own pieces. Pieces. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, and with their own story and so forth. Right. So they, so from what I understand, because I actually haven't seen it yet. Um, from what I understand, it's going to be all. They're they're not. There's not one story. They're all their own. They're all their own stories. They're all their own pieces. And so that's what makes it a repertory. So we have uh, Stanton Welsh. His his piece called Play, which is the name of the actual performance as a whole as well. We have his. Deborah Deep Mouton has her own. Um, and then mine as well. And then about two or three more. So people will see about six different performances that night. Wow. Yeah, I think it's cool, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it, it really sounds cool. like nothing I've ever heard before, so man. I'm very intrigued to yeah. uh, see how this production will all come about. Yeah, man, I, it's something that, it's something that, um, as I say, you know, like, I've made a career being a poet by collaborating, yeah. right? And Houston Ballet 
has a reputation of of kind of pushing envelopes, right? Back in the 80s when it wasn't cool, they they um they got they were the first um um nationally recognized ballet to put an African American woman as a principal dancer. Mm-hmm. So oh, Lauren like, Anderson. Hey. Yeah, 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 Lauren. there we go, right? So like that was that that was like super forward thinking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and, yeah. and then also right now currently they have the first Latina a uh, Latina uh, principal dancer, and then like they're also, I believe, one of the first. If I'm lying, don't call me out. But uh, the like the first time spoken word to be to be uh, uh, commissioned and brought in by the ballet uh, with spoken word and ballet dancing. So like that, that's just envelopes all over the place that they want to push. And so I'm just happy to be a part of it. Yeah, indeed. You're listening to Access Houston, talking to Outspoken Bean, who is a part of the production play from the Houston Ballet. It's an event celebrating Houston's resilience after Hurricane Harvey. And it is happening this weekend, June the 8th through uh, the 10th at uh, George R. Brown. Um, so Bean, mm-hmm. uh, there are a lot of people who um, haven't heard your work or, uh, you know, may not even be familiar of um, of the arts community in Houston and the, you know, array of uh, artists and talents that we have. Having said that. OK. All um, right. If you ha- <laughs> if you have a small piece on hand that you could give our listening audience. So you can imagine what play will be like. Yeah. So Bean is going to do a, a quick spoken word piece and there then just go. imagine the dancers dancing, contemporary dance, yeah, ballet. Man. So, you know, I, I'm going to do a different piece that I like a lot. I'm not going to do the one I'm doing there. Sure, of course. Because, no, no, I wouldn't you know, want you to. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, man, because you got to come see it. <laughs> and, and I am. I'll have family in town. My aunt and my sisters and my it's nephews be will be here. So it's going to be great, man. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is called Scribble. Um, the future of the United States is a colorful transformation becoming the crayon slate of America. My skin is a primary, so intentionally, I raise pastel hands even for secondary hues. Being a part of this makeup is what made up this land. From the dandelion swaths of Texas to the aquamarine coast of Seattle and the salmon tone of Miami, inhale deep-hearted breaths, exhale over its geographic screen print. The united tent of America is learning to make a melting pot stretch. The cloths are cut from, or the cloths are cut from the sparse Bengal banner traditions. Traditions that they inform us today are innovated, are innovations for our tomorrow, which actually presently makes us somewhat of time travelers. Welcoming you to America's future is entering the mix of our own abstract tomorrow. Like today, will bring out the beauty of our brothers and sisters. Remember, we are 300 million crayon citizens, even if melted stripped, shaven, broken there's still color in your value in the united prisms of America what's seen as perfection we shatter and together dance to the remix pieces, capturing flawless is a myth and with a smile like mine you too would have a reason to wake up like this, we sleep well, tomorrow be a brighter day in the Crayola state of America there still might be confinements readied for your alignments but you have the option to let your life scribble outside of them mm. there it is no club outspoken thank you man Dean, thank you man who is a part of the Houston ballet play play which is happening June the 8th through the 10th that is uh, this weekend Friday show is at 7 30 Saturday show is at 7 30 and Sunday show is at 2 p.m. at the George R. Brown General Assembly Hall um, for more information just log on to HoustonBallet.org this is going to be an incredible one-of-a-kind uh, event that is celebrating the Houston community yes. um, in an artistic response to the devastation of Hurricane Harvey. So, um, man, Bean, I'm excited for you. Thank you. I'm excited for you and the Houston Ballet. Thank like, you, man. This is innovative. This is different. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I can't wait to see this. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm excited to be a part of it myself. Um, and always, 
you know, thank you for having me on, man, for sure. Oh, man, it, it, it is absolutely my pleasure. Again, to get more information on the Houston's Ballet play, log on to HoustonBallet.org. That's HoustonBallet.org. Outspoken being, bro. Thank yeah. you so much. And thank you to the people of uh, the Houston Ballet. But thank you for coming on, brother. No worries, man. Easy. I, I may be back. I may be back next week. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, man. <laughs> no lies there. And thank you for listening to Access Houston. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Uh, one of my favorite organizations in the city, Baker Ripley Neighborhood Centers. They are back, and now I am here with the first time we're on the program from Baker Ripley. He is the youth program manager. Uh, please welcome Mr. Sean Brennan. Good Thank morning, you. sir. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate it. Man, so uh, Baker Ripley, y'all, you all are really just darlings of of the city i mean you i have done so much from facilitating and managing the uh the centers for evacuees from hurricane mm -hmm. harvey to the uh, free tax preparations and now you all are doing uh, the youth summer camp something for the kids to do yeah. uh this summer so very excited about that uh it kicks off in june six locations uh for the uh community centers and neighborhood centers here uh, in Houston. So, well, first, tell us about your position. You, you are the youth program manager. What does that entail? Yeah, so uh, that's a lot, right? Um, <laughs> so we do a lot of different activities with the youth, and I kind of oversee the activities that happen at all six of our community center locations. Um, and so specifically, we do a lot with kids ages three all the way up to 18. Okay. So we have like our little leaders program, which is ages three to 13. And then for our high school age kids, we call them our young leaders and they're 14 to 18. So mm -hmm. during the summer, we run all day camps, um, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. Um, starting June 4th all the way through August 17th. Um, for our little leaders, we are heavily focused on STEM activities, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Yes. We want to make sure that this summer is fun for the kids, but they're also learning something, you know. Uh -huh. Like it's not just a throwaway day and you're not just being dropped off and we're babysitting, right? Uh -huh. There's something productive that's going to happen with your kids whenever they come to our programs. The so we focus a lot on that STEM aspect. So each day they're doing science, technology, engineering, mathematics. We focus heavily on math and science and then um, we throw in technology and engineering and other aspects to try to build that hands-on aspect. Mm -hmm. um, we, do, we do a lot with uh, Lego robotics. Oh, um, so now you're talking actually, to kids' language. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we're actually going to be hosting uh, within our, our community centers a little Lego competition with the robotics. Wow. And uh, we have one group that's going to be focused on um, through a, a partnership that we have with United Way. Um, they provided the funds so that we're going to be having this competition and we're going to be using these Sphero robots. Have you ever heard of those? I have not. So they're like little the little BB-8 balls, you know, okay. from Star Wars. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. the kids are going to learn how to program these things using their oh. phones and we're going to have little competitions with that. And so their learning is going to build up starting with those Spheros and then going to the Lego robotics. And so they're going to add the engineering component at that point. So we're really trying to encompass this whole learning aspect because the summer, one of the things that all parents worry about is that the summer slide, the summer learning loss that, uh -huh. that occurs whenever yeah. they're not going to school anymore. Right. So we're, we're making sure that we are adding that educational component to and it. And it's fun. Yeah. Like the kids, you know, are having fun and not even realizing that they're learning I and something. I'm doing, right, right, yeah. right. So that, so that is the trick and that, and, and it's so, um, it's so appropriate for um, right now because STEM is uh, the big thing when it comes to education and, you know, with the world that we live in today with technology, social media, these phones, how you said the kids are going to be operating um, the robots from their phone is very, very timely. I um I can really appreciate that. You know, yeah. A long way from when I was coming up and going to summer <laughs> camp, like we didn't have, you know, things, things of, of, of this nature. Were you... Um, involved in kind of putting together this sort of curriculum, if you will, for these summer camps? So I'm a part of the planning process. We have a whole team that comes together and does the planning for our programs. Um, and, it, you know, Baker Ripley, we have a, a community um, 
an appreciative inquiry style of building our programs where we reach out to the community and find out exactly what they want for their programs. Uh -huh. Nice. So whenever we talk to the kids and they say these are the type of things that they want to see, we try to construct our programs around that. That's dope. So it's really just trying to stay on top of what they want, what they want to see, and then how can we provide that. Okay. So it's doing all the research, research and, and all to stay that, on yeah. top of that and stuff. And see what the people want. I'm not always the best guys. at staying on top of that stuff. <laughs> so i got to make sure that I hire the good people that are on top of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Sean Brennan, who's the youth program manager at Baker Ripley. Baker Ripley Neighborhood Centers, they are having the youth summer camp that kicks off on June the 4th, and it goes through August the 17th. So with, with there being two different groups, you got the little leaders mm -hmm. for uh, ages three to 13 and the young leaders from 14 to 18. Um, do you have a favorite group to deal with? Like, Ooh, me personally, um, it's, you know, it depends on what kind of mood I am. I'm in, I guess. Okay. Uh -huh. Because there are times that you can have way more real conversations with those high schoolers. Right. right yeah. With the 14 and to 18. Yeah. I can, I can, you know, talk sports with them. I can uh -huh. get real about some life issues uh -huh. and they're just at a different point in their life. But the joy that you kind of get of working with, with the, the, younger the younger ones, ones yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of priceless all in itself. I can only imagine because especially the younger ones, like from an intellectual standpoint, they seem way more advanced than kids that I was interacting with when I was growing yeah. up. Even kids that I, you know, saw growing up in the, you know, early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. So like these kids are <laughs> super smart. Like you've yeah. been here before. It's like. Because, I mean, like, growing up, we didn't have the technology they had. Like, no, not at the all. The fact that I have to tell a six-year-old to go put their tablet away. <laughs> We're yeah. trying to learn something. Go right. put your phone away. It's like, man, when did when did you get your first phone? You know, like, that's crazy that these are the times that we live in now. But yeah, I know, that's right? That's our reality. And that's what they're growing up with. Right. So for the little leaders um, throughout the camp, what? On a daily, what would they? Uh, what would a day look like for the little leaders? For the little leaders, so that's our our younger ones. Yes. So we provide three meals a day. We do okay. breakfast, lunch, and a snack. So whenever they come in, we start with breakfast. Then we go straight into our educational component. So mm -hmm. we'll do the math or science, mm -hmm. and we'll do our experiments with that. Um, we also have our themed lessons. So we try to have like a fun learning aspect. So maybe like you know barnyard animals uh, or outer space, those okay. type of things. Okay. Um, each week we have a field trip. Uh, for them so oh. we try to incorporate the themed learning aspects with their field trips so if it's like outer space we'll combine that with a field trip to nasa space center oh. um if it's barnyard animals we'll take a trip to like old mcdonald farm or okay. the houston zoo to try to provide that real life aspect of what they've been learning wait a minute sidebar old mcdonald farm is a real farm yeah 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 um you'll have to check it out google it it's wow. actually it's actually pretty cool it's a fun field trip for the kids they get to experience some real animals and see what a real farm looks like and do a little horseback riding things like that <laughs> <laughs> i'm just thinking of the nursery rhyme like wait a minute yeah, hold I'm up i'm sure they got it from something i don't know about the whole copyright thing <laughs> right, right 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 and so and, and a day for the young leaders so the, the 14 18. the young leaders so for their program during the summer, they're heavily focused on an entrepreneurial program that we have called Peers and Profits. Hmm. So it walks them through the process of actually starting their own business. Um, so they go through product development. They do a complete business plan. They budget. Shut do, up. Do a market analysis, price point variations. I am here for this. <laughs> so it's really just trying to build up different leadership components within them uh, so that they learn these different traits that they're going to need whenever they finish high yeah. school. I mean, so we're really trying to prepare them for life after high school, whether that be their career or college, mm -hmm. where you just want to make sure that they're prepared. They got that one up. Yeah, so we focus heavily on building up their 21st century skills, which are like, uh, you know, communication, mm -hmm. professionalism, mm -hmm. networking, okay. all those different things that an employer is expecting to see, but sometimes is, is missing within our kids whenever they're starting a job and, they just want to stay on their phones the whole time. Man, that is so amazing. You listen to Access Houston. We're talking to Sean Britton, who is the youth program manager for Baker Baker Ripley Neighborhood Centers, who is having their uh, youth summer camp kicks off on uh, June the fourth. Um, this, I'm I'm blown away. I'm I'm so <laughs> glad because I just feel like the whole educational. A component just if it's just in regular schooling mm -hmm. just education p 
period has seemed to somehow taken a back seat. So, you know, with organizations like Baker Ripley Neighborhood Centers who uh, st- believe in our youth and are very cognizant of uh, what they're into and uh, the the advancement of science, technology, engineering, mathematics, mm-hmm. um, it, it's just mind blowing. I'm, I'm just, it just makes me happy because, you know, I feel like they're trying to throw our kids away. Yeah. You know, I mean, feeding them with this music that is on here and then just all of the stuff that's on social media and uh, for you all to help to get back to them learning, you know, I mean, this whole business plan, the whole thing for the kids, like that is so important because I wish I would have had something like that. It, it's got me thinking like uh, maybe I would have learned how to respect money more yeah and you know um maybe i wouldn't have been so green as to you know not knowing the importance of my credit so what you all are doing and stealing this in these uh young kids at this age is uh, i mean hats off it's just phenomenal and i want to i want to give a shout out to to my staff actually teach this these curriculums and actually work directly with the kids because it's interesting that you talk about like the budgeting and the money because mm-hmm. I, there are aspects that I think that we even as adults right we get this type of financial learning and I think sometimes we blow it off mm-hmm. and a, a lot of times working with these students it's really just how you deliver it mm-hmm. and we take pride in the quality of programming that we're providing to the kids right. and it really starts with my staff and how they make this learning aspect interesting and fun for the kids so that they're actually retaining what they're learning. What they're learning, yeah. That, that's what makes it important because every child learns differently. But when you add everything that you all are adding, yeah. um, that, that'll definitely keep a child's uh, attention. So if, if parents that are listening and want uh, to enroll their uh, child in the youth summer camp, where, where should they go? What, what do they need to do? So um, visit one of our locations. You can find them on our website at bakerripley.org slash youth-programs. You can also uh, give me a call at my number, 281-768-1639, or email me, S. Brennan, B-R-E-N-N-A-N, at BakerRipley.org. Indeed. And before you get out of here, Sean, you know, I understand that you are a huge Rockets fan. You know, the city is, right. it's a lituation here in H-Town <laughs> with Red Nation. Uh-huh. Uh, game three tonight in the Bay Area. We are tied 1-1. Uh, what are your feelings? Um. So we got to take at least one of these games, we, right? Yes, we, we have take to take one, one on the on the road, yes. So I feel like this is the one. Okay. We got to take this we're, one. We're, we're going to uh, come out fired continue up. Continue off this uh, uh, uh off of um uh Wednesday's win. That's right. So we got we we have the momentum going. Our role players got a little confidence. Mm-hmm. We got to keep this ball rolling. Take this one tonight. And then let's see if we can steal another one. Yeah, let's say You know what the, the only frustrating thing about the Western Conference Finals, uh, both conferences. Mm-hmm. These long waits that we have, like what is really going on here with yeah, the, so the <laughs> amount of time that we have to wait in between games? It's like it's so unfair. Yeah, like we've been waiting since Wednesday night. As soon <laughs> right. as the game ended, we're like, when's that next game? <laughs> right, And just right. every day has been killing me ever since then. I know, but but, but tonight is tonight. And uh, this summer, uh, Baker Ripley Neighborhood Centers is, is the place for your children for the youth summer camp, which starts on uh, June the 4th. Um, um, they've got six different neighborhood centers here in Houston, uh, Baker Ripley does. So uh, just log on to the website. They'll have all of the information there on how you can uh, enroll and have your child participate in the youth summer camp and the programs that they have, high-quality programs. I mean, you just heard what Sean said. It's just absolutely uh, amazing. So they need to go to where? One more time. So go to our website, bakerripley.org, youth-programs. Indeed, man. Sean, thanks for coming through, man. This was a lot of fun. No problem. And thank you for listening to Access Houston.